from scientists learning that mushrooms can grow brain cells to a certain mushroom being at the center of a murder mystery, 2023 was one of the wildest years in mushrooms that we have ever seen. My name is Tony Shields, this is episode 27, and I do have to mention before we get into it, for the previous episode of The Mushroom Show, I accidentally uploaded it with the title TMS 26 Final, and that just meant it was the final edit of the show, not the final episode of the show. I didn't notice the mistake for quite a while, and it resulted and a bunch of people leaving comments asking me to please not end the show. So that was actually really nice to see. It means a lot to me that people are enjoying the show. I want to thank you all so much for the support. And I'll tell you right now that that was not the final episode of the show. There's so much to talk about in the world of mushrooms as we go through this mushroom revolution. And I plan to keep making episodes of the mushroom show for a long time coming. So if you like mushrooms, if you like the mushroom show, please go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help the channel grow. And if you want to see future episodes of the mushroom show, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. Let's jump into the show. Now you may have recently heard the term or seen some headlines that say something along the lines of mushrooms are having a moment. Because that's what major headlines were saying in 2019, in 2020, in 2021, in 2022, and now it's almost the end of 2023 and mushrooms are objectively more popular than ever. Mushrooms are taking center stage in discussions around health, technology, fashion, cuisine, and basically anything else you can think of. So maybe mushrooms aren't just having a moment maybe mushrooms are having a movement. I was recently inspired by Spotify Wrapped to do something similar in the mushroom space, something like 2023 Mushroom Wrapped, or maybe we can call it Sporify Wrapped. But basically the idea is to go back over the last 12 months and look at all the incredible things that have happened in the world of mushrooms, all the different ways that mushrooms have contributed to our everyday lives. As I was doing research for this, I was kind of blown away by how much can actually happen in a 12 month period because a ton of stuff happened. So let's Let's jump into it. Starting with the reemergence of psilocybin. Now, there's no doubt that we are in the midst of a psychedelic renaissance, a movement in which psilocybin mushrooms are taking center stage. It seems like ages ago now, but 2023 was the year where Oregon became the first US state to allow the adult use of psilocybin with licensed guidelines that went into effect to kick off the year on January 1st. Now, this program has not really been a smash it out of the park success by all metrics so far, but some turbulence was definitely expected as this is something that has never really been attempted before at scale in the US. The first licensed facility opened in Eugene, Oregon in June of this year, a place called Epic Healing Eugene gene. And since then, many people have flocked to the state to take part in psilocybin therapy. There was also some early controversy with the program when one of the major training facilities involved in facilitator licensing went bankrupt, leaving many in the program feeling like they were rugged on their investment and showing how this might not be a smooth rollout that can be mimicked by other states. The program is still pretty early in its development, and I think it's safe to say at this point that not everybody is loving the way it's rolling out. Some people argue that it's way too expensive for both the training the licensing, and the bureaucracy, which trickles down to the end user. Furthermore, some people say that this structure makes psilocybin-assisted therapy completely inaccessible to those who need it the most because of the high cost. And apparently the majority of the customers so far are from out of state, where many who are eager to see what mushrooms have to offer have flooded in to take advantage of the program and are spending upwards of $2,500 per session at one of the 17 service centers now located throughout the state. But that wasn't the only thing that made headlines in psilocybin this year. Mushrooms are coming to the mainstream in more ways than one, with 2023 also being the year that Paul Stamets received patent approval for the infamous Stamets stack. This is a combination of psilocybin, lion's mane, which is a powerful nootropic, niacin, and also what they refer to as extracts of plants with neurogenic properties. The fact that this patent was granted shows a higher likelihood, in my opinion, that psilocybin is going to be commercialized in more ways than one, in this case, in the form of my microdosing or combining it with other ingredients instead of just pure mushrooms or something like a retreat model. And it's clear that there are others that see lots of potential here because a company named Mycomedical Life Sciences actually managed to raise $60 million for trials, further research, and the eventual commercialization of this stack. Now, 2023, in my opinion, was also the year of the mushroom dispensary. Not because they became legal or anything like that, but because mushroom dispensaries all over North America kept popping up, shutting down, 
down, opening up again, getting shut down again, in this kind of nationwide game of whack-a-mole. Now, this tells me two things. Number one, there's clearly a high amount of consumer demand for easily accessible psilocybin mushrooms. And number two, governments will have to face this head-on in the coming years, otherwise it will be a major waste of resources to just continuously shut down stores that open up again the very next day. Now, throughout the year, as psilocybin is emerging in this way, multiple states have introduced bills to try and regulate it. And they all seem to be taking different approaches. For example, California introduced a bill to decriminalize psilocybin by 2025, which would make possession, preparation, and transportation lawful. But that bill was vetoed by California Governor Gavin Newsom in October, kicking any further attempts to decriminalization to 2024. Other states that propose bills to consider legalization or decriminalization of psilocybin, or studies and pilot programs to evaluate psilocybin therapy in 2023, include New York, Nevada, New Jersey, Illinois, Massachusetts, Missouri, and even Utah, where lawmakers were looking at a pilot program which would attempt to establish a fully regulated supply chain similar to their medical marijuana program. This eventually got punted down the road, similar to what we saw in California. I'm sure many of these bills will see a similar fate. But the fact that so many state legislators are investigating psilocybin means that change is definitely accelerating into 2024 and beyond. Now, mushrooms can nourish, mushrooms can heal, mushrooms can confound the mind, but mushrooms can also kill. And nowhere is that more obvious than with the deadliest mushroom of all, Amanita phylloides, also known as the death cap, which had a huge year in 2023, getting headlines multiple times throughout the year. Firstly, in January of this year, scientists discovered that death caps have a unique method of reproduction that potentially explains why we are seeing more and more of them every year. The actual study is rather complicated, but in short, the mushroom is able to reproduce by essentially fertilizing itself, obviating the need for a partner, and allowing it to reproduce way faster. This is not unique to the death cap, it has been observed in other mushrooms, but not always outside of the lab, so the fact that this is happening out in the wild is quite the revelation. The widespread proliferation of this mushroom might have been one of the factors that led to the nationwide mushroom mania in Australia about a murder involving this mushroom. We covered this a number of times already on the show, but in short, it involved the case of an Australian woman who cooked a beef wellington for four different people that allegedly contained the death cap mushrooms, which resulted in the death of three people and severe poisoning of another. There was a lot of speculation originally about whether or not the death cap was actually involved, whether or not mushrooms were involved at all, or whether or not she did it on purpose. Since then, Aaron Patterson was ultimately charged with murder, and the death cap is suspected as being the weapon of choice. So although this isn't a closed case yet, it sure appears to be heading that way. Now, this story catapulted the death cap into the public eye, a lot of people learning it about the first time, but also kind of kicked off a new wave of mycophobia, otherwise known as people being afraid of mushrooms. And I'm hoping that this wave of mycophobia will kind of dissipate as quickly as it rose. Now, the death cap also made headlines this year in a much more positive light, because the deadliest mushroom in the world might soon have an antidote. This was discovered by researchers who used CRISPR gene editing technology to discover which which gene in humans was responsible for succumbing to the toxicity of this mushroom, the gene so-called STT3B. Now, with that knowledge, they were able to use computer modeling and ran a large database search for compounds that have already been approved by the FDA, which might be able to block this gene. This search spit out a list of 34 potential antidotes. Now, most of these potential antidotes failed upon further testing, but there was one, known as indocyanine green, that showed to be able to protect against liver damage from the Amanita phylloides toxins when it was tested on mice. Now, this compound was actually originally discovered by Kodak, the film company, and it was originally used for medical imaging. Now, again, what's cool with this compound is that it's already been approved for use in humans, not necessarily as an antidote for the death cap, but for other purposes. Either way, though, it makes you think that the path for an antidote for the death cap for use in humans might be a lot easier to trod. Now, human trials have not yet been conducted for this specific use case, so we don't really really know how well it will work, but I'm hoping that this is something I could cover for an episode of Sporify Wrapped at least sometime this decade. The use of mushrooms beyond just food and medicine, otherwise known as mycotechnology, also saw some impressive headlines in 2023, showing promise in advancing everything from computers to sustainable construction to preventing forest fires. In March, scientists from the University of West England showcased what they called a mushroom mother
motherboard, a type of fungal computer prototype. Now, this was actually discovered by the same researcher, Adam Adamansky, who discovered that mushrooms have a language of about 50 words, which we covered in 2022. And it uses kind of the same principle, this idea that mushrooms and mushroom mycelium can send electrical signals and they can be interpreted in different ways, which could be used for computation. Now, do I think that mushrooms are gonna replace silicon chips anytime soon? Well, no, but it's still cool to think about the possibilities of different fungal computer interfaces. When you think about it, mycelium underground in the forest does kind of resemble the internet in a way with endless connections and all of these different signals passing around information. Some people have even dubbed it the wood wide web. Translating the myco web to microchips to make mycochips doesn't really seem that far-fetched. Information and motherboards to insulation and other boards, the ones that make up building materials, that is, 2023 also saw some advancements in mycotecture. This is a play on the word architecture, and it's basically the ability to use mushrooms and more specifically mycelium for building infrastructure. The Phoenix is a 300 unit housing complex in Oakland that is pushing for the use of mycelium composite paneling, pitching it as more sustainable and more environmentally friendly than more traditional building materials. This is a project led by Autodesk, known for construction and engineering software, who says buildings contribute 40% of global carbon emissions. So to solve the global carbon problem, you have to solve the architecture carbon problem. For an example of what this can look like, here is a simple panel that I made with just turkey tail mycelium and wood, and you couldn't really use this for anything, but you can see how if you, you know, formed it properly, you could have a really hard, reliable insulative material that could potentially be used for building stuff. Again, with most of the stuff in microtechnology, we are probably still a number of years away from seeing it being used in a real use case in the real world at scale, but still it is pretty interesting to think of the possibilities and I think we have a lot to look forward to in the coming years. In a similar but perhaps more morbid vein, 2023 also saw the launch of a more universal product, something that has a potential customer being everyone in the world, coffin. Yes, mushroom coffins in what might be the last industry you'd expect to be disrupted by mushrooms. These coffins tout the ability to decay quickly, as quickly as 45 days, and act as a forest-friendly alternative to traditional burial methods. The coffins sell for about a thousand US dollars, but they also offer an urn and a burial bed for about $250 and $700 respectively. Now, mycotechnology was definitely on fire in 2023, but it was also the year in which some crap crafty folks in Colorado thought of ways that mushrooms could actually prevent fires. Wildfires, that is. Because one of the reasons for wildfires is the overall density of our forests, which is mitigated by thinning, piling up the debris, and doing what are known as controlled burns. But the result of these fire suppression efforts is sometimes mega fires that get out of control and cause huge amounts of devastation. The idea that they came up with is to instead degrade the piles using something called a cold fire, which is kind of a fun play on words, meaning the decomposition of the wood by mushroom mycelium. So instead of burning the piles, they would just inoculate it with some sort of mushroom that's native to the area, like maybe an oyster mushroom or a turkey tail mushroom, something that can really eat a lot of wood, have it decompose the wood, and then instead of having a burn pile or instead of damaging the environment in that way, you'll end up with just a big pile of compost or organic soil. Now, that seems like a great trade, and although this technique is still very much so in its infancy, I can see it really coming to fruition as a great way to mitigate fires in the future. The tech the story of 2023 was no doubt artificial intelligence. With the epic rise of ChatGPT and other technologies as the world gets closer to creating true artificial general intelligence. But every new technology comes with its problems and the world of mushrooms was not spared. And that's because over the last year, we also saw the rise of AI written mushroom foraging guides. Now on one hand, that is pretty cool. Like imagine if you could just have an artificially intelligent mushroom hunting companion. But the problem is these chatbots will often hallucinate and just make up stuff that sounds correct, but is completely wrong. Since it can be dangerous to pick and eat wild mushrooms unless you properly identify them, blindly trusting a book not written by a human expert can lead to a bad time. Now, it doesn't seem like AI is slowing down. 2023 is probably just the start of this. I'm just hoping when it comes to mushrooms, it's gonna do more good than bad. Now, usually when I'm looking for stories for the mushroom show, I have to dig pretty deep because even though mushrooms are getting more popular, it's still a pretty niche topic, albeit full of diehards. But this year, 2023, mushrooms really did make the mainstream news on a number of occasions. 
First was the now infamous Janet Yellen incident, who is the United States Secretary of the Treasury, where she apparently ate some hallucinogenic mushrooms during a trip to China. This story made headlines, and to be honest, I thought it was a little bit ridiculous because she ate them at a restaurant, and the accusation seemed to be related to her somewhat strange behavior during a meeting on the trip. Now, it's not like Janet Yellen was tripping on five dried grams of Psilocybe cubensis over in China, but this story ended up being way more interesting than I thought. Because the the more I looked into it, I learned that there is a very mysterious blue staining bolete that does grow in the area and according to many anecdotal reports, does have some psychoactive properties. Now is this a new magic mushroom or is this just kind of some made up story of fungi fiction? I'm not going to go into full details here because we did do a full segment on it so you can go back and watch that if you want to see it, but it was really, really interesting. Lion's Mane also made what now seems to be an annual appearance in the world of mushroom research. Research. In January of this year, a groundbreaking paper was published in the Journal of Neurochemistry that showed how extracts from lion's mane were able to actually grow brain cells. It was not a human study, it was done on mice, but the results were pretty astounding. Certain extracts from the mushroom were shown to increase both the length of the neurites, another word for brain cells, and the number of neurites in the mouse model. This was pretty exciting to see, not only because now there are some smarter mice out there, but it's because scientists are just continually unveiling the mysteries of this mushroom and better understanding how it actually works. Moving now from functional mushrooms to fictional mushrooms, one mushroom in particular seemed to blur the lines between those two categories. I'm talking, of course, about cordyceps, which was all over the headlines earlier in the year with everyone worrying that a worldwide cordyceps outbreak could turn us all into zombies. This is, of course, because of the hit HBO show, The Last of Us, which features a post-apocalyptic world caused by this fascinating fungus. The show really does justice to how cool and interesting mushrooms can be, but unfortunately, it overstates, to an extreme degree, the reality of cordyceps. Cordyceps is endoparasitic, which means it can parasitize insects and does kind of turn them into zombies, but it can't do that to humans. In fact, cordyceps is actually a popular supplement used instead for energy, for endurance, and for its adaptogenic properties. Still, it was an awesome show regardless, and anything that gets people talking about mushrooms is all right by me. And that's it for Sporify 2023. That was really fun to do. And if I missed anything, if there's any stories that you thought I should have included or anything cool that happened to the world of mushrooms over the last year that I missed, please let me know down in the comments below. Either way, I'm super excited for 2024 and what the next year has in store for us. So again, if you like mushrooms, if you like the mushroom show, please go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help the channel grow. And if you wanna see future episodes of the show, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.